Welcome to my studio. My name is Elizabeth Bostick, and today we are painting this beautiful sunflowers and bee watercolor. I'm using a number 12 round brush, a number 0 round brush, and a pencil to trace the inside of my masking tape roll to make a perfect circle. The diameter is approximately 3 inches or 7.5 centimeters. I have the outline for this painting in the description below if you'd like to trace it and follow along that way. For the second circle, or the second sunflower, I place the masking tape so that it is a bit lower and almost overlapping the first circle. For the inside of the sunflowers, I use my little bottle of acrylic glitter paint which is approximately one and a quarter inch or just under three and a quarter centimeter in diameter. I then make light lines for the stems of each sunflower. I then cut off a crescent moon shape from the circle as the flower will be at an angle facing away and down. I lighten the lines with my kneaded eraser. For the sunflower petals, I am using a wash of cadmium yellow light. I start at the top with a little dot, a little puddle, then at the bottom, and one on each side so you have the four dots starting out. And then in between each of those four dots, I make another little dot or little puddle of that cadmium yellow wash. And then without dabbing or um, get, taking any of the paint off of my paintbrush, I pull out that paint to make the petal shape. I do this all around the sunflower with each little dot becoming a petal of the sunflower. I don't dab my brush in the paper towel or rinse it off at all for the sunflower. I keep all the paint on the paintbrush and a little bit more is added when the paintbrush touches that little puddle or little dot of watercolor. While the petals are still wet, I charge each of the petals with a little bit of the darker yellow. In this case, it's the cadmium deep yellow, but you could also use an orange for this. It gives each petal just a little bit more interest. I really like the way the wet on wet blending of the colors looks when it dries. The second sunflower is done in the same way with the cadmium yellow light wash used to make the eight little puddles of color. So after I dab off the darker yellow from my brush, I dip it into the cadmium yellow light wash and make the four little dots and then in between each of the four I place another dot so you have that same eight dots total. This one will be a little bit different at the, as the petals will be curving down into kind of like the left uh, bottom corner of the page as the sunflower is uh, facing down a little bit but it will be done the same way where each petal is um, painted in with the cadmium yellow light and I have five of the petals are going to look like the petals on the last sunflower and then three of these initial petals are going to be foreshortened while the, where they will look a little bit different but while those first five are still wet I am charging that yellow with a bit of the darker um, cadmium deep yellow Again, you can use an orange for this, perhaps, whatever you think looks good. And this will create that wet on wet, uh, really pretty, um, really pretty effect. And then for these three petals that are left, I use a paper towel to brush off the remaining um, dark paint on the brush. And then I'm making them into kind of like little triangular shapes where the bottom of the petals are fatter and rounded and the tops are kind of pointed like a triangle. Once we're done with that, you'll go back to the first sunflower 
and fill in between each set of petals another little dot of the cadmium yellow light. You'll again, using the same technique, uh, make the little petal shapes. If you're using a cellulose paper, you might want to charge the petals maybe two at a time, paint two, and then go ahead with the darker yellow or orange, charge them while they're still wet with that second um, hue of color. With this 100% cotton paper, it takes longer to dry than the cellulose paper, so you can paint them all in and then charge them all at the same time with that darker yellow or orange color. But with the cellulose paper, they do tend to dry faster, so you might want to paint a couple at a time, a couple of petals at a time, and charge a couple of, a couple of them at a time as well. It just depends on the paper that you're using. So then for the second flower, we're doing the same thing where we are going back in and adding a dot in between each of the petals that we have previously painted. So we're adding eight petals total. Once those eight dots are added, you can start on adding a couple of um, ones to that right hand side. I know it seems a little bit trickier, but there's no perfect way to do it. If you look at pictures of sunflowers towards the side, it kind of just looks like a bunch of random shapes. So don't get too caught up in what they look like exactly. Just kind of those um, triangular shapes with a longer pointier top and a more rounded bottom. And then for the petals on the left-hand side of the flower, they will be in the same shape as the ones that you have done before. And then you'll be charging them again with that lighter yellow or maybe an orange. And it will give you that really pretty wet on wet blending look. Now we are ready for the bees. I'm using that same cadmium yellow light, but you can use any yellow you would like for the bees. I'm making three little puddles of yellow. The little puddle towards the head at the top of the bee, I'm making that a little thinner. Then the middle puddle, I'm making that the thickest of the three puddles of yellow. And then for the little fuzzy bottom, it's going to be smaller than their fuzzy round tummy. After finishing up the bees, it's time to go back to the sunflowers. Using that same cadmium yellow light, we're going to put in one more set of petals. This will be the last set of petals. You don't even have to add these in. You can stop with the petals that you have. I think they look really pretty the way that they are, but I decided to put in one more set of petals as sunflowers do have I think 30 something petals for the smaller ones I read. They do have a lot of petals. <laughs> so in between each petal, I put another little dot of yellow and I'm just filling it in, um, making them about the same, the same length and trying not to um, make it look like a blob, <laughs> trying to have each little tip of the petal show and then charging those petals again with that um, darker cadmium deep yellow, or you could use an orange as well. I do the same for the um, other sunflower and put in all the, um, the next set of petals and then charge them as well with a little bit of the cadmium deep yellow. I then go back to the sunflower that is facing down at an angle and using some more of that cadmium yellow light, I'm putting in some more of the petals to make it fuller and to help it look like it is facing um, at an angle down towards that left hand corner of the paper. 
So I'm just adding a few more petals and it doesn't have to look exactly like one thing or another so don't be too um, caught up in exactly what they look like. If you look at photos of sunflowers online you'll see a lot of differences. So while you're waiting for those petals to dry we're going to go back into the bees and here is where I use that size zero brush or the smallest brush that you have with the tiniest tip and what I'm doing is filling in the spaces in between those little yellow uh, puddles of color and also adding the head which is kind of like a crescent moon shape um, at the very top of the bee and then making sure to um, have all that white space filled in I'm using a wash of the black that came with my watercolor set. I'm using the Rosa Gallery Botanical 28 Colors, which I'm really enjoying. I highly recommend it. And I added some water to the black so that I can have uh, multiple shades of black so it, it's not too thick, too rich, too dark at first so that I can go back in and charge it with some extra black to give it um, a darker shade of black to look like shadow or once it's dried maybe layer on another of another layer of black to give it some shadow and then I add in the legs which are just teeny tiny little squiggly legs I don't want to make them look like they're you know, straight lines sticking out, that would look pretty funny. If you look at a picture of the bee's legs, they do um, look just kind of like little, little squiggles. And here I'm adding in some more black to my uh, thin black wash so that I can go back in and make even darker areas on the head and then on the bottom of the bees bellies so that it looks like there's some shadow like the Sun might be shining down and there's a little bit of shadow on um, the belly of the bee and then using that very fine tip of the brush I make as thin of a line as possible for the wings and then using a very watered down lightest shade possible gray I'm uh, filling in that shape of the wing. It is a lot easier to go darker later than it is to lighten up, especially with a black or a purple. They usually um, kind of stain the paper. They're very hard to lift back up with a paper towel. Well, you can do it. It is a bit more difficult than going as light as possible and then darkening it up later on. For the bees bellies, for the yellow part, I'm going in with the cadmium, uh, cadmium deep yellow. You can also use an orange and giving it some shading so that it has more of a three-dimensional look, giving it some more interest. And then going back in with another layer of the black wash to make sure that it's dark enough to really give it a look of shading on the bee's belly and a little bit more darkness on the bee's legs. I then add in the little teeny tiny antenna. I did mess up on the second one so I ended up um, using water and washing them off and using a paper towel and picking them back up and then I have to go back and put them back in once it's dry. Going back to the sunflowers, I am using a wash of cadmium deep yellow to fill in the interior of the sunflower. All of the petals are completely dry so it will not bleed out into them. It will just stay where you put it. And then for the second sunflower, I'm going in with just water as I don't want to confuse the interior of the sunflower with the petals as this is a more complex shape. With the first sunflower, I can still see my pencil uh, circle so that I can follow it. But with the second flower, 
I am trying to avoid painting over the petals that go and cover part of the interior of the sunflower. So I painted it first with just water and then I'm going back into that water with a burnt sienna. That way the burnt sienna is staying just where I've put down the water. If you're very careful with where you put down that water, the burnt sienna that you're adding to it will just remain in that wet area. Now I'm going back into that first sunflower and I'm using, using the same burnt sienna going all the way around my um, pencil circle. So I'm covering up my pencil lines. You won't see them anymore at all. And with this circle, you don't want it to be too perfect because um, with sunflowers, that circle is made up of little tiny seeds. So you can make that circular line a little bit bumpy. And then on the very inside, leaving some yellow around it, I'm using that same color, the burnt sienna, and making a little circle on the inside. For the first stem, I'm using a combination of emerald green and burnt sienna. I go all the way down to the edge of the paper, and then for a little bit of shadow, at the top of the stem, I'm adding in some ultramarine blue so that it looks like the sun is shining down and the flowers might be shading one another. And then at the bottom of the stem, I have a mix of ultramarine blue and then the green that I'm using and that's what I added to the bottom of the stem. Because the stem is still wet, it will have that nice wet on wet blend as it dries. For the second flower, I used the same mix of the um, emerald green and burnt sienna. Go all the way down to the very bottom of the paper. As you can see there, I have a little kind of a puddle, so I wipe my brush off and soak it up like a sponge. Then I am charging that still wet stem with a little bit of ultramarine blue for the shadow and then a little bit of the green and ultramarine blue mix as well. For the next step, I'm using the violet, which is the PV23. You can use any violet that you have will work. And I'm going back over the interior of the sunflower that's facing down. I'm going over the line of where the brown and the yellow meet. Just to make sure I have that deep, rich, dark color of where the sunflower, um, where the petals are shading the interior. And I'm using the very, very tip of the paintbrush. I make sure my brush is not very wet. So before you do this, you'll want to dab your paintbrush or blot your paintbrush on your paper towel so that it is still a little bit moist, but more damp so that when you put it into um, the purple, it's not going to make puddles on your painting. This will allow you to make those tiny little dots, like a little stippling, and that way you're able to give it some texture, kind of like the seeds that are on the interior of the sunflower. As you can see, I did take away some of it where I'm going to end up, putting, end up putting in another petal later. One of the nice things about watercolor is that if you make a mistake, you can re-wet it and um, pick it up with a paper towel or a cloth. For the second sunflower, I'm doing the same thing where I am going around that line of where the brown hits the yellow and I'm using my damp brush with the purple and making those little tiny stippling dots. If you're not comfortable with this, you can use um, much bigger brush marks. They don't have to be so tiny. But if you practice on a scrap piece of paper, I'll bet that you can achieve those tiny dots as well. So I'd give it a try. 
For the next step, I am doing the green part that's on the back side of the sunflower. I'm using the same wash of the emerald green mixed in with the, uh, the burnt sienna that I used for the stems. The first layer is a lighter wash and then I'm adding in a little bit of a darker, darker wash. Um, and then I'm adding in a few pieces of that green that go into the petals but most of it is going out and back towards the bees and the sunflower behind it with just a few pieces going up into the left or down into the left. For the leaves, I'm using that same combination of emerald green and burnt sienna. To start off, I'm using the very, very tip of the brush and drawing the outline of the leaf of how I want it to be. If you're a bit nervous about this part, you could draw it with water first and then add your color into the water. That way, if you don't like the shape that you've drawn with the water, you can use a paper towel and soak up that water back up, let it dry, and then try again. <laughs> Once you have the shape that you like, you can go ahead and add your color to it. Or you can just give it a try and go with what you get or practice on a scrap piece of paper. I always practice before um, I put something on a quality piece of paper just so that I have a little more, um, I guess, a little more faith in myself and then I'm a little bit more free and I have more fun with it. For a little more interest, I went ahead and charged that green with a little bit of the, um, the ultramarine blue. So it gave that first leaf a bit of a shadow to the bottom of it. For the second leaf, I'm using that same combination of emerald green and burnt sienna. You can use whatever green that you have. You definitely don't need to use this combination. It just happens to be the green that I'm kind of really into at the moment. <laughs> um, sometimes I'll be more into an olive green, um, sometimes more of a yellow green, but at the moment I'm just really loving this combination. For the third leaf, it's done the same way with the same combination of colors. And I uh, drew the outline of the leaf first, and then I'm filling it in. If your outline dries before you're able to fill it in, you'll be stuck without outline. So what you can do is get your brush really wet and lightly scrub the line so that it all dries in nicely and smoothly together. I then am adding a little bit of that ultramarine blue just to the very top of the leaf and to the stem, and also the stem of the leaf on the other side. For this fourth leaf, I'm using, again, the same combination of green. Um, this green, it looks different depending on how much water you have on your brush versus how much of the pigment you have on your brush. So even though it's the same green for all of the leaves, it looks different depending on how much of the pigment is in the wash and also adding the ultramarine blue or the mix of ultramarine blue and the green that you're working with like I did just here to the bottom of this leaf. It really changes the color so that you have this beautiful combination and um, variety of colors with within the same uh, color grouping or the same color of these leaves. For this fifth leaf, it's a bit thinner and a little bit more wavy. I was looking at pictures of, I was looking at pictures of sunflowers, sunflower leaves, and they have kind of a heart shape at the top of them. And then they have wavy sides and depending on if you're looking up at them or if they're 
you know, completely furled out for the sun, or if they're kind of in their baby leaf stage, they take on all kinds of shapes, all kinds of forms. So you can be pretty free with however you want to do these leaves. I just tried to stick with a bit smoother on the bottom and more roughly on the top as if you're kind of seeing the side view or at the bottom of the leaves towards the top and then the leaves towards the bottom of the stem. I did it, did them more so you could see the heart shape of the top of the leaves and then the waviness more on both sides of the leaf. For the last leaf, I had the most fun with making it that very curvy, free form, as if it was kind of flying off in the wind. And I left it um, a lighter color, but I did soak up some of that color with the dried off brush as I went a little bit too dark at first. And then I added in uh, more of that darker ultramarine blue to the stem a little bit of that ultramarine blue and green mix to give it a little more interest. And then for the sunflower, the little bits of green that come off the back, if someone knows the name of that, let me know. Um, I'm using that same combination of ultramarine blue and the green that I'm using to give it that darker hue of green um, so it looks a little more three-dimensional and a little more like the sun is hitting it, and so you see some of that shadow. For this next step, I have the burnt sienna, and I'm dipping my brush into it. I have a damp brush, it's not too wet. And again, I'm using the very tip of the brush and making little tiny dots all around the edge of the sunflower, and then into that um, yellow area and all, all throughout it, especially um, the areas that don't have any stippling yet. And if, um, because the, because the sunflower, the layers that we have already painted are completely bone dry, if you make a mistake at this point and you don't like how much brown you're adding, you can pick it up with a paper towel and it shouldn't pick up the layers underneath it. But if it does, that's okay too. <laughs> you can always add more color to it. And then I take that same uh, burnt sienna and I'm adding more little stippling dots, more texture to the other sunflower as well. When you feel like it looks um, nicely textured, the way that a sunflower might be with all the seeds and the pollen that's there, then you can let it go. You can stop. You don't have to put in as much detail as I did. Um, also, if you don't have a burnt sienna, you can use any brown. And if you want to make the brown warmer, you can add a warm yellow to it or a warm red to it. The warm red mixed with the cool brown will make it look more like a burnt sienna if you don't have a reddish brown. We are at the final step for the sunflowers. How exciting. So for this, we are mixing up a wash of burnt sienna and the cadmium deep yellow, which if you don't have these two colors, you can use an orange and add a little bit of brown to the orange or maybe a yellow and add some brown to the yellow. And what we are doing is we're adding in some shadow to the petals. 
So as you can see, I'm making sure that the shadow goes right up against against that darkest part of the sunflower and then comes out from that darkest point kind of like a petal and it follows the direction that the petals are going. This step isn't necessary. You can leave your sunflowers how they are, but I really liked to um, add, I really like to add a little bit of depth to the sunflowers and using a darker shade or a darker uh, hue in the petal area, I think it really gives you more of that three-dimensional effect. It's not a loose as loose of a look as my last tutorial um, with the cone flowers. This one definitely has more detail, so I apologize. <laughs> um, sometimes I can get really carried away with detail, but it was fun to put this uh, the shadow of the petals in there as well, just to give it a bit more depth. I put a little bit of it into the foreshortened petals as well. It defines one petal from another in places and has it looking a little bit more three-dimensional. Using this same mix of um, burnt sienna and cadmium deep yellow, we are ready to move on to the last bit of painting. For this sunflower, I'm using it for the same reason. It gives the sunflower a little more depth, a little more, it makes it look a little more three-dimensional, gives it a little more interest, and it also gives it a look of a luscious amount of beautiful sunflower petals. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure I'm starting right from the darkest part of the sunflower, that very dark circle, and brushing out from that center area into the petal. Those last few little strokes of the paintbrush, we are finished with our beautiful sunflower and bee watercolor painting. I am so grateful and happy that you are here painting with me today. I hope that you get a chance to create today, maybe go for a walk outside, spend some time with family, and I will see you next time.